Now, God's Word, when it's followed, allows us to live a simple, beautiful, enjoyable life. I can tell you that hating people is complicated, and it is hard work. How many of you feel like life sometimes gets pretty complicated? And is there anybody here that's like me that even if it's not complicated, it doesn't take you very long to complicate it? <laughs> Human beings have the ability to just ramp everything up to the next level. And I have to remind myself, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Well, what's the simple solution to this? What's the, what would Jesus do in this situation? And Luke 18, verse 17, I want you to get this today. Truly I say unto you, whoever does not accept and receive and welcome the kingdom of God like a little child. Pay attention that he said little. Because you can see every year that a child gets older, they begin to have the ability also to complicate things. But when they're really little, there's just none of that. He who does not accept and receive the kingdom like a little child shall not in any way enter it at all. Now that doesn't mean that he won't be saved, but I believe that many people are officially, legally in the kingdom, but they never really enjoy kingdom living because their approach is all wrong. Is it possible that maybe you're mixed up about your approach? Let me show you how Satan gets after even kids as they begin to get very old. We have seven-year-old twin granddaughters. Their names are Angel and Star. And they're very close. They love each other very much. They do have different personalities. One is more aggressive, one is a little more laid back, one's more of a talker, one's a little more quiet. And last week, Star wasn't feeling very good, and uh, so she wasn't sure she was going to be able to, to go to school. And, and Angel said to our daughter Sandra, she said, oh, I, I, I want Star to be able to go to school. And Sandy thought, oh, that's sweet. She's going to, she wants her twin to be there with her. She's going to miss her. And then all of a sudden, Angel said, if she stays home sick today, when she goes to school tomorrow, because she was sick, she's going to get a lot more hugs than me. <laughs> now, the thing that I thought was amazing was that at seven years old, the enemy's already got them in that rat race of competition of wanting to make sure that they get as much as everybody else, and they get as much attention as everybody else. And so see, already the enemy is trying to steal any kind of knowledge of who they are as individuals. And it becomes the comparison and the competition game that I am so fed up with that I can hardly stand it. Not only in everybody else, but when I see it in myself, it's just like I'm just not going to live like that anymore. And I got over a lot of that a long time ago, but it still keeps trying to creep up into our lives, doesn't it? So that's why we need to hear this kind of stuff over and over and over. So children, little children especially, are simple. They really are very simple. And one of the things that they're very good at is forgiveness. I mean, two kids can be just ready to tear each other's hair out and five minutes later, they're playing together and giving each other their favorite toy. And they forgot all about it. Now, I'm only going to say a little bit about this forgiveness issue, but it is probably still yet one of the biggest problems that we have among Christians. There is just way too many Christians that are mad. And it messes up the plan of God for your life. It steals your peace. It steals your joy. It is definitely not pleasing to God. And when we get hurt or offended or wounded, which we will, if you're going to live in the world, you're going to get hurt. If you're going to get involved with any other human being, there's going to come a time when they're going to disappoint you. If you're looking for a perfect person, a perfect church, a perfect job, 
you just need to get out of the planet and go float on the clouds somewhere because <laughs> it just does not exist. But a lot of the whole hurt and wounded thing is that we get hurt. We get offended. And there is another choice. The other choice is I'm going to let it go. I'm going to drop it. Why can't we do like what we read about David last night where when Eliab came and tried to make him feel small and little, the Bible says that David just turned away from Eliab. We need to turn away from some of this stuff that's making us bleed eternally. A lot of the people that hurt you honestly and truly, they really don't set out to. Sometimes they don't even know they did it. And I kind of learned a long time ago, what sense does it make for me to go around being miserable all day, being mad at somebody that don't even care that I'm mad and they're out having a good time? It's like when I used to get mad at Dave and, you know, this was when I would get mad and stay mad for a long time and I was not yet obeying that scripture not to let the sun go down on your anger. And maybe we'd have some kind of an argument during the day and we'd go to bed at night and I'd sleep on the seam of the mattress because I didn't want him to touch me. And, I'd be cold all night because I was not going to ask him for any cover and I'd be laying there with all this junk in my head, this bitterness, this anger, this trying to figure this out. And Dave's over there covered up, snugly, snoring, having nice dreams. Now I ask you, who was suffering? <laughs> Dave was able to just let it go, but I had to hang on to it, just keep rehashing it over and over and over. So. I want you to get this as much as possible by me saying it one time because I don't have time to stay on this all day. Everything that God tells us to do in the Bible is something that will be good for us if we do it. So when you forgive, you're not doing God a favor. You're not even doing your enemies a favor. You are doing something for you. You are giving yourself the gift of freedom. Come on. And honestly, I believe we, we complicate the whole thought process of that. There's somebody even right here today when I said that, you're like, yeah, well, you don't know what I went through and you don't know how bad it hurts. And I'm not getting, you know, so there you go again, complicating it. But I feel, I feel, and it's not fair. No, 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 no. You're wasting your time. God promises to be our vindicator. But God will not do what he promises to do if we don't open the door for him through obedience. If we do what we can do, God will do what we cannot do. So keep it simple. Just let it go. Stop thinking about it. Stop talking about it. Every time Satan tries to drag you back there again, just say, I'm not going back there. I've been around that mountain. I'm not doing that anymore. And the next time you see that person that was rude to you or hurt you or whatever, if I were you, I would just kick the devil in the teeth and I would go right up and give them some kind of compliment. <laughs> I'm not getting too many hand claps on that one. Now, I'm not suggesting that anybody open the door for abuse, you know. If somebody is abusing you and being kind to them is just going to keep the door open for them to keep abusing you, that's a different situation than what I'm talking about. But the Bible says, love your enemies. Be good to those and do favors for those who have hurt you and wounded you. And you see, the thing that you don't understand, it took me a long time to understand, and probably some of you do understand it, is if somebody would fit into the category of enemy in my life, and I do something kind for them, that is the highest form of spiritual warfare that you can enter into. You know what? I've come to realize, really, truly, people don't know what they're doing. I mean, they honestly really don't know what they're doing. And you know, my dad sexually abused me for 15 years, and I can tell you that he knew what he did was wrong. But I honestly believe that he did not understand how he was damaging me. 
He really didn't. He actually was being controlled by an evil spirit of lust, and he just didn't get it. And you know, hurting people hurt people. I want to take you to two little groups of Scripture and just show you how the simple thing is just to let it go. Now, you can make a nightmare out of this. I mean, you can hang on to something for the rest of your life, and you can hate and be bitter and resentful and angry and mad and offended. And every time you see the person, you can just cringe inside, and you can talk about them, and you can think about them. Or you could just make a decision today, I'm just going to let it go. Does that sound good to anybody? I think I'm just going to do myself a favor and just let that go. And you know what? Maybe you don't even have anything right now, but I can promise you, and I'm not trying to be negative, not too much time will go by and you'll be able to use this message. <laughs> Job 42, beginning in verse 10. You know, Job just had terrible, 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 tragic things going on in his life. I mean, I'm talking lost everything, boils from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And so his friends come to comfort him. <laughs> Have you ever really needed one of your friends to be there for you? And they just said the total wrong thing. It's like, how could you be that dumb and breathe? Can you not see at all what I need from you at this particular time? Like, nothing aggravates me worse when I'm hurting than to have somebody preach me one of my own sermons. <laughs> oh, that's aggravating. I don't need you to preach to me right now. I just need you to understand I'm hurting and to comfort me. Well, Job had been through a really, really rough time, and his friends just really totally had not been there for him. But let's see what happens. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job and restored his fortunes when he prayed for his friends. And also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And there came to him all of his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before. And they ate bread with him in his house and they sympathized with him. Finally, he's getting what he wants. And they comforted him over all the distressing calamities that the Lord had brought upon him. And every man also gave him a piece of money and every man gave him an earring of gold. And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the first, the name of the first daughter, Jemima, and the name of the second, Kezia, and the name of the third, Karen Hapuk. I'm glad I wasn't her. <laughs> and in all the land, there were no women as fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. I want you to get this. And after this, Job lived 140 years. Say, after this, after this thing that you've gone through, this thing that you're going through, there's a whole lot of life left. But the quality of that life that is left for you depends on how you handle that thing that happened to you. Please, and not only for those of you in here, for our wonderful television viewing audience, please, please, please remember that there's life after whatever tragic thing is going on in your life right now. Job lived after all that. He didn't just live to be 140. After all that, he lived another 140 years. And God gave him twice as much as he had before. And it all started when he prayed for his friends to be blessed who had hurt him terribly. One more great example and then we'll move on. Genesis chapter 50. Talk for a minute about Joseph. Young man had a dream. 
His brothers hated him because he was daddy's favorite. His dad gave him a beautiful coat, a special gift. And so let's put the scriptures up. So just before I read these, they actually hated Joseph so bad that they ended up selling him as a slave and telling his dad that he'd been killed. And I mean, he ended up being in prison for years, 13 years for something he didn't do. And it was just a big mess, all because of what they did. So now there's a famine in the land and they sent a messenger to Joseph saying, your father commanded before he died saying, so shall you say to Joseph, his father left a message for Joseph, forgive, take up and away all resentment and all claims of requital concerning, I pray you now, the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now we pray you, forgive the trespass of the servants of your father's God. And Joseph wept when they spoke that way to him. Now there was a famine in the land and Actually, Joseph's brothers didn't have food. But God had so moved in Joseph's life because he refused to be bitter that he was actually in charge of all the food in Egypt. Listen, no matter how somebody else tries to put you down, God will promote you. I said God will promote you, but he will not promote you with bitterness, resentment, hatred, and unforgiveness in your heart. God will not promote you if you don't forgive. Amen? Okay, let's put this back up and finish it. Then his brothers went and fell down before him saying, you see, we're your servants and we're willing to be your slaves. And Joseph said to them, fear not, for am I in the place of God? Vengeance is his, not mine. I love that. And as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are this day. Listen, whether you like it or not, there are times when God will use the evil in somebody else's life to work something good in you. Amen. That doesn't mean that he created the evil, but he will use it to help mature you and help you grow up and help you develop the character of God. Amen. Don't just get in prayer and try to sound spiritual. Oh, God, help me love the unlovely. We pray a lot of stuff we don't want any more than a man in the moon. Okay, let's go ahead. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for and support you and your little ones. <laughs> so now he turns around and he's going to support them and take care of them. And he comforted them imparting cheer, hope, and strength. And he spoke to their hearts kindly. Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. There's life after tragedy. He had a lot of years left after his brothers sold him into slavery. And I'm just imploring you today to become like a little child and just let it go, get it off your mind, forget it, and go on and enjoy the life that you've still got left. Amen. Can anybody make that decision today? Amen. And it is a decision. I really want you to understand that. And please, those of you watching by television, understand that you can make a decision. You are a decisive, decision-making person. And you can make a decision. I do not care how I feel. I am not going to let this destroy the rest of my life. I am going to release this thing to God, and I am going to trust Him to make it right. Now, God's Word, when it's followed, allows us to live a simple, beautiful, enjoyable life. I can tell you that hating people is complicated, and it is hard work. Amen. Another thing that we see about children that we could certainly stand to copy is they just believe so easy. I mean, children believe in magic. They believe in fairy tales. They have no problem coming up with an imaginary playmate. 
They have no problem just kind of believing that there's this other world here and that they can make things up and decide to see things they want to see them. And enjoy it. You know, if your life is not so hot right now, why don't you just dream a little? I can tell you what, it'll just make you feel better to dream a little. See, that's our right and privilege as children of God. We can move over in that supernatural realm and we can think things on purpose. We can think what we want to think and you can create a little joy in your own life. And I, how many of you believe children do that? This is a book by John Ortberg, God is Closer Than You Think. I really like the book. I've actually read it about three times. And um, here's just a couple of examples. This is under a little section called, I Can Feel Him Walking Around. A friend of ours have a daughter who said when she was five years old, five years old, I know that Jesus lives in my heart because when I put my hand on it, I can feel him walking around in there. <laughs> now, actually, us more mature adults, we know that was, oh, that was just her heartbeat. That's silly. But that little childlike spirit felt that heartbeat. And you know, actually, she was right. Because your heart beating is a sign that the life of God is in you. And so she said, oh, I know that God's alive. I can feel him walking around in my heart. I think we need a lot more of that childlike wonder than what we allow ourselves to have. I think we can enjoy our lives a whole lot more if we'll just stop being so mature and boring. Be a little more childlike. We need to be more like little children. You know, children easily believe. They believe what they can't see. They believe what their parents tell them. If you tell a child you've got an angel that goes with you everywhere that you go, they're more than likely to believe it. They may even give their angel a name. You never can tell. So many wonderful things the Bible says about simply believing. And I just want to encourage you today that that's a decision you can make. You can decide to complicate this and say, well, how can I know that's true? I don't feel it. I don't see it. Or you can just decide, you know what? I'm going to believe it. You know what? At this point in my life, I would choose to believe what I believe. I, even if somebody came along and said, you know, it's really not true. And, and I thought, you know, you're probably right. I'd choose to believe it anyway just because it makes me so stinking happy. Amen. Amen. And you know what? It, it, even if there was some outside chance that I'm being really foolish for giving my enemies, I'm going to do it anyway because it just makes me happy. I'd much rather not be full of hatred and bitterness and resentment. John 11:40 is one of my favorite scriptures. Jesus said, did I not tell you if you would only believe that you would see the glory of God? Can I encourage you today to get out of the complication of your mind and see what's in your heart? See if you can feel Jesus walking around in there. Well, you know, we can all simplify our lives by just following God's word. His Word is for our good, and it provides us with the right path to follow. We complicate our lives when we begin to rebel toward God's principles and the things that He teaches us in His Word. So simplify your life. Obey God. The earlier you obey God, the better and the simpler and the more powerful your life is going to be. Psalm 19.8 says, The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and bright, enlightening the eyes. So just make a decision. If there's any area in your life where you're wrestling with God, why not just say, you know what, God, I think you're smarter than me, and I'm just going to do it your way.
We're here at the Hand of Hope Medical Clinic in Angacha, Ethiopia. And Dave, I just wanted to ask you, what, what are you feeling as you come here and see the work that God's allowing us to do? Uh, I'm feeling humbled. I'm feeling thrilled, excited about what God's given us an opportunity to do. Uh, you know, when, when I look at this place, it was a rundown wreck at one time, and now it's so beautiful. The grounds are uh, actually, they say, they're therapeutic to the people here. Yeah, right. And uh, the people are excited about what, what has happened here. But we're excited about what God is doing, how he's helping the people here in Mangacha, Ethiopia. We have the opportunity to yeah. help hurting people, and that's our goal, that's our desire, that's our hunger for, for Joyce Meyer Ministry. Well, one thing's for sure, we certainly love helping people and to see the smiles on the kids' faces and, and to see the hope in their parents' eyes is just a, a phenomenal blessing. I can honestly say, I don't think that there's anything in the world that's better or gives you a better feeling than knowing that you're making a positive difference in somebody else's life. I love to be able to put a smile on someone's face. Thank you for helping us do that. Elke gedachte roept emoties in ons op. Kan jij hier goed mee omgaan? Laat je niet leiden door jouw gevoelens. Joyce Meyer heeft daarover een boek geschreven. Zodat jij de baas wordt over jouw emoties. Leven boven je gevoel. Bestel het boek Leven boven je gevoel nu via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.